Welcome to the Late Night Race Review. Sainz takes it all as Russell clips the wall. Max off the pace, but still takes fifth place. And Lando holds out, but just about. It's the Singapore GP. We wrap it up with a look at our fantasy league and our predictions game, as always. Don't forget to support the podcast by hitting those like, follow, and subscribe buttons. Welcome back to the Late Night Race Review. I am Owen Scott, and with me, as always, is the elusive Dave Jericho in his lovely dressing gown. And Isidro Gonsalves with a new haircut. Welcome, Isidro's haircut. We've been asking for it, and we finally got it. A race without Max taking a big dump all over the rest of the grid. And it could be argued it was one of the most exciting races of the season so far. Dave... What are your opinions of the race weekend overall? What did you think? Um, do you know, I, I, I was because I was watching the, the race delayed, I was watching a recording, and I caught a WhatsApp message from, I think it was you, Scotty, in, the, in our F1 group. Yeah. And it said, I think you said something like, what a race or something like that. And what, what I was watching was sort of before the safety car came out for, the, um, for Logan Sargent. Yeah. And it was just that kind of, you know, everyone was just maintaining their sort of once. And I was like, I don't know, man, this is a bit of a, this is a, it was snooze fest, like so. I was, I was hoping that something else unfolded, but it was, yeah, unbelievable, wasn't it? Yeah, I it can really great. enjoy that. Yeah, top race of the year so far. Isidro, your thoughts on on this weekend? It was refreshing to see, not to see Max on top, and mm-hmm. it was a great race. I mean, the the top six, any of them could uh, have win first throughout the race. We we never knew, despite signs being. Uh, Always on top, uh, because I don't know another ten laps and it would be a different story maybe. But overall, it was a great race. Yeah, Dave. I don't think we really have to um, tell anyone about the F one fantasy league or who's on top. I think stop inventing is still right up there. I'm guessing. Oh, lads, I'm not prepared for this podcast. I don't even. Ha- <laughs> I don't have anything open in front of me. I'm sure someone's win. Actually, hang on a second. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. Oh, I- everybody, hold pause for a second because this could be worth checking because the last time i was fucking leading the check <laughs> oh right okay so okay if, if i'm if that's still the case then it's worth me checking and uh if not we can edit this out of the podcast <laughs> no it's not getting editing nothing's getting edited today f1 fantasy i'm sure the points aren't in yet for the race but let's no. see um oh sweet jesus i have to log in lads oh, oh it's okay don't I'm I'm kind of hoping stop inventing is still is is up there now in P1. Let's see, let's see, and the positions are oh, and I'm still at the top. But that's actually <laughs> only after the the um, that's only after the uh, qualifying results have come in. So uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I I'll be honest if I feel I'm going to drop down from there. So I'm just going to enjoy it for the start of this podcast. I'm at the top. Stop inventing's dropped down to third, and Team Trek, who was at one stage at the top, is now down in fifth. Whoa. So. Uh, yeah, yeah, there's a bit of... Now, that could change around now when the race results come in, but, uh, Scotty, you are in 20th, and Isidro, yes. you are in 18th. Position. I'm coming for you, Isidro. <laughs> and our uh, friend over at F1 News for You, actually, I was I was speaking to him and said, he says he actually forgot to do his team for a while, and I thought, you know what, that's funny, because Scotty told me he forgot to do his team for a while, but the guy in F1 News for You came in late on this league, and he has <laughs> managed to jump you, who had the same <laughs> excuse for not doing his team. <laughs> yeah. It's the same for the fantasy football, uh, just forget about it after week one, it is yeah. what it is. <laughs> um, right, lads, let's get stuck into today, and we'll break it apart, and no better place to start than with our race winner, Carla Sainz. He drove the crap out of that car today, Dave, didn't he? Um, I I don't think he put a foot wrong. Um, I I don't remember him uh, ever slipping up today. He was he really just dealt with the pressure beautifully, didn't he? It was, it would. You know, I was uh, I was thinking it's probably one of the most intelligent things I've seen in Formula One since in recent years since when. Um, Jeddah, when uh, Verstappen and uh, and uh, Lewis were battling for the title, and they were um, messing around with the DRS detection line, do you remember? Mm. And they were kind of allowing the, the the other to overtake, just so that they would still have the DRS going down into the pit uh, into the start finish straight. Mm-hmm. I thought that was unbelievable. But this today, now what Signs was doing, backing up and allowing Norris to have the DRS in order to use him as a buffer for the. Mercedes, unbelievably, absolutely unbelievable. It was the most refreshing thing to see 
just a not only a great drive, but a, just to see another talented driver at the front and being able to showcase what they can do rather than us just kind of watching, you know, Max go around in circles like, you know. <laughs> Um, yeah, it was it was great, and it, it, it would it would make you wish for um, a less dominant uh, era by Max Verstappen because if we get that week in week out, I mean it would be so exciting, incredible. Like just there was, and like you say, he didn't put a foot wrong. I don't think all weekend. Um, yeah, he like he's had that's two strong races he's had back to back. Like, and I know that's only his, that's his second ra- uh, win with uh, Ferrari, but I don't know. We like, like I said, we've been saying it in recent podcasts. It's kind of I'm getting the feeling he's the he's the the uh, he's the the child that's getting the good gifts at Christmas and uh, <laughs> <laughs> Leclerc is getting the hand me downs. Good old Ferrari. So, Andrew, give me your thoughts on the smooth operator today and his performance. It was a great performance from Sainz and uh, Ferrari team also did very well because we know how Ferrari is on the pit stops and how can they mess up the race. I mean, Sainz can do very very well. But uh, if the pit crew decides to clown around, then the, r- the race is ruined like they did for Leclerc. I think he lost, what, five seconds on that on that pit stop. But mm-hmm. for Sainz, uh, he did a superb race today. It was very, very good. It was like Max, but the Spanish version. <laughs> um, and uh, a nice little segue there with uh, Leclerc being brought up. Um, he started on the soft stave and, and had a slightly different fate than um, than Sainz. He was slightly unlucky to come out just behind where he wanted to be after the virtual safety car, that pit stop, as Isidro says. But he, he, he just fell short today. I haven't rewatched now what happened, but I think from what I was kind of making from the commentators and stuff like that, I don't necessarily think it was a, for once, I don't think Ferrari's pit crew screwed him on this one. I think what happened was he backed up he slowed down a bit too much under the virtual virtual safety car. So when he was coming into the pit stops, the rest of the pack were already backed up behind him. So when he came in to do his stop, um, he had to wait in his box for, I don't know, however many cars, three or four cars to go past him. And that's why his pit stop was so long. They, I think they had the tires on the car in record time. Mm-hmm. Now, you could argue that maybe the release was like half a second too long or something like that, but I mean marginal. But the cars that they had to wait for to come through, I think it might have been the fact that they they were right behind him coming into the pit stops, um, and that's what the delay was. So, uh, and I mean, I don't know how much more he could have, how quicker he could have gone um, under the virtual safety car without kind of, um, you know, exceeding that delta time. So I... Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure what else he could have done there, but uh, yeah, he just he wasn't on the he wasn't on the the, the level of Carlos Sainz this weekend. That's that's for sure. Mm. And Isidro, Dave's already alluded to it somewhat, but it, is there a pattern emerging here? Is there is there, as Dave calls it, a favorite child um, starting to be uh, a little bit clearer at at Ferrari? Yeah, it's happy to see that Ferrari is finally opening their eyes and see that Sainz actually should be the main driver mm. and with Clark like he did today he was a very he did a very good job he defend the uh, defend Sainz position as much as he could from the from the Mercedes and I think that if Ferrari wants uh, Sainz to get to the third place I'm not sure they could get the second but the third place on the drivers I think going forward is Leclerc support Sainz because clearly the summer break was very good for Sainz. You could see that uh, he's, uh, he's very different from what it was on the first uh, half of the season and what's uh, what's happening now. Same goes for the pit crew. They definitely did some updates on the pit crew itself during the summer. Mm-hmm. Because Ferrari is now doing good. Sainz is, is great. He's showing he's uh, the best driver of, of both uh, in Ferrari. Yeah, it's frustrating sometimes to watch Ferrari because they'll have a little run where they're quite successful and the pit crew seem to be working quite well with the team and the, the drivers work quite well and everything seems to come into into unison and it's they have a really good setup. I'll come to you, Dave. Um, but then there is always the chance that Clown College comes back into session again and everything falls apart. Dave? Um, yeah, we have to kind of as well think or remember, like, you know, because you see a lot of posts on Twitter from the F1 kind of fan groups and stuff like that saying, oh, Ferrari are back, you know, blah, 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 two great results in a row. Like, 
Monza is a race where they like they fine tune that car within an inch of its life for that track. I mean, mm. if they do nothing all year but have a good performance at Monza, then that's all they give a shit about. Mm. Um, so they were inevitably going to be strong there. Um, historically, Versa- uh, not Versa- well, Verstappen and uh, Red Bull in the last couple of years have been shit at Singapore. They their car is designed for the rest of the tracks and for some reason whatever and I, I well outside of the my pay grade I don't understand why particularly Singapore would be uh wouldn't favor that uh, Red Bull uh, to the extent that it does that then left it open for the best of the rest and at the moment Ferrari is uh, kind of the best of the rest so like we have to remember like we have to kind of take these results with a bit of pinch of salt like because we've had two back to back races that sort of favor Ferrari and not favor Red Bull. Um, so um, I think Japan will see uh, where, where the, what, you know, how the how the cards lie. Hmm. Okay, well, it was nice to to get our heads above water for a little while and and breathe uh, on on max uh, filtered air. Um, but I'm sure, or as you say, down on the, the <laughs> <laughs> it will be back to normal next week. So, um, yeah, don't tune in and see. Um, let's move on from from Ferrari. And next in our queue, Mr. Lando Norris, um, just unbelievable today. And, and, and yet again, he's putting in great performances recently. Um, some brave overtakes and managed to, to manage the race perfectly, just like Sainz did. Um, also aided by that super quick pit stop under the virtual safety car to undercut Leclerc. That was beautiful. Dave, break down um, Lando and McLaren today and this weekend. Yeah, McLaren have been coming back all season. Like they've been just getting stronger and stronger, which is a any McLaren fan like I say nearly more so than Ferrari fans. Like, because I mean. God, McLaren went through some like Ferrari go, gone gone through some dark times, but they're there or thereabouts. You know, they're always sort of best of the rest or in that best of the rest pack. Whereas McLaren spent a good portion of time at the back with Will, you know, in the Williams yeah. category, and the, you know they were horrific. You know, when you know Alonso was driving for them and everything, they just couldn't get anywhere. So to see them where they're at, the team themselves are making absolute leaps and bounds. Um, they're still maybe not there with the straight line speed, but certainly that you know on the downforce and the cornering and stuff like that, absolutely phenomenal. Um, and no better driver than Lando Norris to take to capitalize on that advantage that they've been giving him. Um, he did absolutely incredible today, and I think maybe obviously there was a sort of a bit of fortune landed in his lap this in this race because had he had Carlos Sainz had more left in that car that he could have just taken off away from uh, Lando and not worry about if the Mercedes overtake him, um, what would happen at that point. Uh, I think Lando would have been absolutely gobbled up by those Mercedes. So so, um, so I think fortune fell in his lap a bit with the, the fact that signs needed him within the DRS zone. Um, but not taking that anything away from Lando. Incredible, incredible drive. Mm. And Isidro, not, not unlike uh, Ferrari, they seem to have a good driver partnership now. I know Piastri is young. He's performing unbelievably well. Ended up in P7, I think, in the end today. Um, they seem to have something that they can build on there. Yeah, the McLaren definitely has been improving, like they've said, from the beginning at the bottom of the pack and now fighting for podiums. And uh, the team, it's probably... Like Mercedes with Hamilton and Russell, I think McLaren is doing very well with their choice of Norris and Piastri. Piastri as a rookie, but he's doing very, very well. He knows he knows his car, he knows the tracks. And I mean, like today, he started, I think, was uh, P17, finished P7. Mm. And that was a great drive. And same goes for Norris, fighting till the end, literally, for that first place. Mm. But, uh, and with the pressure of the Mercedes on their back, uh, he was able to finish second, and that was another great race for him and for the McLaren team. And speaking of, of Mercedes, Dave, there was almost a, a throwback to the days of, of maybe three years ago when you looked in your rearview mirror and you saw a black Mercedes and fear was struck into your heart. Um, we had that throwback today. Um, although we were a little bit unfortunate at the end with, with uh, Russell clipping the wall. Tell me about Mercedes today, Dave. 
Yeah, uh, the, do you know, outside of um, Carla Sainz tactically being unbelievable, I think Mercedes played their hand with that uh, spare set of medium tires that they had, fresh set of medium tires that they had. I think they played that brilliantly. Um, I don't think they could have done any better. I think they, I think they played that as best as they could, and it just unfortunately, like Carla Sainz outsmarted them with his tactics, and it just worked. Um, but they did brilliant. Um, one of the things when you're saying about when you see that black Mercedes, I, the, one of the things I was kind of, I kind of sort of made a mental note as I was watching was when uh, Hamilton overtook Verstappen. I said, I was like, I'd say, and that wasn't for any other reason than that was track position. That was a fight on track, like, you know, mm. uh, and I'd say Hamilton was just like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> fuck you, man. <laughs> um, but uh, oh, yeah, incredible. And then, um, yeah, I honestly, I thought towards the end then, uh, yeah, like Russell burned up his tires. I thought Hamilton had the pace then on Russell, mm -hmm. but two laps to go. This is kind of like what we saw in uh, Monza with um, with the Ferraris when they realized that there was only one spot up for grabs. And then all of a sudden the two lads, uh, you know, the gloves were off and they were just racing for that third spot. Mm -hmm. um, the same happens today when I think they got to lap 60 um and it was 60 for 62 laps didn't we have 62, um, yeah yeah um and we got to lap 60 and um i think the two lads realized hang on a second this is this is going to be a struggle now for the two of us to get into the podium so mm -hmm. that's when hamilton started pushing pressurizing uh russell more um russell's tires then just like fell off a cliff fast like so and he was having trouble then keeping up with um or you know kind of keeping hamilton behind and keeping uh pace with uh, Lando and, and Sainz and then ultimately just paid the price I think and the pr price he paid was from a lack of concentration I don't think it was uh, that wasn't caused from the tires because when I first saw it and he went into the wall on the last lap I thought oh that's got to be a tire issue he overcooked it going into the corner and then went off the wall and then when you see the replay you're like no that was actually just he lost concentration <laughs> he was just too wide going into the corner swinging into the apex and clipped the wheel mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's uh, yeah, it was a, a bad day for for uh, George Russell, but for Mercedes as a whole, I think they played it really well. Hamilton, I'm sure, is delighted with that third place, and it's uh, I I think they they've done well today. Hamilton really showing his experience there, and just kind of sitting nicely nicely behind and just waiting for his opportunity. But Cedro George. He was almost, uh, he almost had tunnel vision in, in his ambitions to try and win this race. And he could see it from very, very early on. He was saying, I want to win. How do I get up there? And he was, it was eating away at him. And it, a little bit of uh, immaturity still maybe in, in George Russell to try and get that, that uh, as much as he could out of the race. Uh, it wasn't fortunate for him that, uh, at the, I mean, he was, he was struck between trying to get second and fighting Mercedes on the back and maybe lost concentration, but he, I think he tried too much, tried to get to second place instead of just realize, no, I think it's safer to get the third place than crash and get nothing, which ended up happening. And because he was doing a solid race until then, from the beginning, he said that he wanted to win, trying and asking team what needs to be done to to win the race mm. and like you're saying i think there was one mile left he decided he took the wrong decision i think he should just uh, realize no i get the podium i get third place I get points everyone is happy mm. uh, but he thought he couldn't make it better and it did not win uh, very good for him and i hamilton could be the the better man here in a way that we've seen Alonso sometimes tell uh, Stroll, you go ahead, I'll stay behind you and give you cover, you finish ahead of me. And that's how you see who's the better man, who's the champion. I'm open to have said the same to Russell saying, look, don't worry about me, I'll stay behind you, I'll protect you, just finish and get the podium. But like uh, that didn't happen here, he was just so... Oh, too bad you crash. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, there's there's still remnants of, of that season that Max um, beat Lewis. I really don't think that Lewis is 
over that season yet. I don't think he's fully um, purged that from his uh, from his psyche. Dave, go on. Uh, I just on that sort of uh, Hamilton and uh, Russell, like Hamilton should be kind of taking the higher ground or the you know, you're whatever. I I I I don't agree. I I don't agree with it. I don't agree with what Alonso does either with Stroll. Like, ah, oh, it's okay. You you know you have that position, and I'll hang back here and defend and so. Like, unless you really think I can't challenge my teammate in the slightest, then fair enough, so hang back. But no, I, I want to see dry, you know, teammates going at it completely. Like, uh, um, unless, like I said, I, I understand when it's for podiums or much needed points, you can understand why teams might come over the radio and say, hold position. Fine, I get that. But when that order is not there, I don't want to see a driver make that decision by themselves and say, "Oh, look at George. He's in. He, he's in third place. He's going to get a podium. Don't worry, George. I'll hang back. You know, go on. You look good there. You know, like he's off his first day off to school or something like that, and he's waving him off like, you know, oh, you look so sweet in your suit there. <laughs> no. One word, Dave. Alpine. Uh, yeah, but that's you're talking about when they were completely wiping themselves out every week. Yes, when they always wipe themselves out every week. That's what I'm talking um, about. <laughs> yeah, well, I want to see that. Well, no, I don't want to see them crash all the time, but I want to see drivers, <laughs> right? Like, they, they were they were battling to see who was going to be... They, like, Ocon wanted to be number one at that team, like... Mm. Um, and he's he's an over aggressive driver, but I want to see that. Like I mean, but that's up to the team then to kind of control that in the back end. Like I mean, like if your drivers, your driver should be skillful enough that you can race hard and not wipe each other out. But the difference, because I mean, they would race that hard with other drivers and not take each other out. So the fact that they were wiping each other out says to me that there's something internal going on there that they need to kind of resolve. So. Yeah, but I, I want to see that. I don't want to see it sanitized in any way that it prevents drivers, you know, pushing their teammates to the limits. And that's what Hamilton did today. He pushed Russell to his absolute breaking point that ended up putting him in a wall, like, you know. And that's what that's that's the way it is. That's what separates champions from uh, from the number two drivers, like, you know. Do you feel that there is a, a, not a conflict of interest, but the Drivers' Championship and the Constructors' Championship, do you think the drivers actually give a damn about the Constructors' Championship? Probably not. Um, well, yes, they do. I mean, they say, oh, it's all about the team and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, they want the, they want the Drivers' Championship. They, I mean, hmm. I'd say if they won the Drivers' Championship and the team didn't win the Constructors' Championship, I don't think they're going to lose any sleep over it. But if hmm. the team won the Constructors' Championship and they didn't win the Drivers' Championship... I'd say that you know that's just a lost opportunity for them as a driver. So yeah. um, I don't think they're going to put on their 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 resume. Oh look at me! I helped gain so many points <laughs> to get Red Bull a, a constructors championship. And you know it's like that kind of thing. Like uh, you know what's that the skit from Family Guy with, with the Beatles? And it's like George comes over and goes, "I wrote a song." Oh, that's great, George. You're going to stick it right here on the refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's exactly what it is when you tell them I helped Red Bull win a Constructors' Championship. It means nothing to them. They want a driver's title. Yeah, Cedric won. But they, they, there was the risk that you mentioned that Russell, as he was crashing to the wall, Hamilton was caught by the crash as well. So suddenly Mercedes was getting a 3-4. Suddenly they were getting zero. But that's, that's racing, like... Mm. you yeah, can't sanitize still. it to stop that if you sanitized it to stop that because you were going to worry about whether you lost out on points then you would end up with a position where say say that was Leclerc in front of Hamilton then it's the same thing like you're kind of like oh do I tell Hamilton to push Leclerc to try and get that third place and risk losing fourth or do we go for it and try and get that third place and get the podium and the trophy and the extra points That's you're going to go different teams but we're talking about teammate putting pressure on another one crashing just... and the team lost points rather than Russell finishing third getting points Hamilton get fourth. Yeah, but for the driver we're talking about and we're like what what Scotty had just asked there about whether the constructors or the driver's title is more important to a driver it's those driver points that are important so you can't tell a driver to hold station and, and pretty much and Mercedes were never going to tell those two drivers to hold station because they thought the win was on for them. So they were gambling at a first one, two, not on a three and four. So that's oh, none of Hamilton or Russell are on the on the race for the championship this year while well, Mercedes is still fighting for No, but they want the position, position in the driver's championship. They want to get as high up there as possible. They don't want to be finishing mid table in the driver's championship. 
you at least want to be getting third or second or something. You don't want to get, you want to be getting something out of it. Hmm. I mean, they're not going to win the constructors' title either. Like you know, it's, it's you know, it's it's, it's, it's to get the second while Hamilton is not getting the second place, third maybe, depending on Alonso. Well, Alonso's doing absolutely brutal at the moment, so I think. Uh, yeah. Let, let's not touch on Alonso just yet. I've got a question about him and his shitty day at the office. Um, let's uh, let's take a step into uh, Red Bull. We haven't mentioned them. Usually, we start off at Red Bull and we talk about Max, but uh, we we haven't touched them at all today. So let's get into that. We'll come back to that debate. That's a good one, um, Dave. The, the burning question uh, for this weekend: Max and Red Bull. What what do you think caused this? Firstly. What what happened? Do you know, I haven't a clue. Like, I mean, usually you see, I watch, I'm watching Formula One a long time and you're usually able to kind of look at races and kind of have a stab at why the car is underperforming uh, in a given track. But even when they interviewed Christian Horner, he was kind of saying they knew it was track specific, but they didn't expect it to be as severe as it was. They, and they thought they were going to be better in sort of race trim than they were in qualifying. Hmm. But why it was so bad? Um, I mean, like all like the last couple of years, um, that Red Bull has been poor in Singapore. So they know there's something, there's a reason for this. So, so I, I, I'm sure they have a, an understanding as to why it's, it's somewhat bad at this track. But to the extent that it was this weekend, I don't know. But maybe that lends in, into why the car is so strong in other circuits, and even worse here this year. Um, there might be something they've done in the build of the car that pushes it to the extreme one way that's making it very, uh, you know, untouchable on other tracks, but has made it like, you know, a an absolute fucking tractor. Although having said that, when we say, I say it's a, a tractor, Verstappen still managed to get it, what, in sixth? Was fifth. it seventh, sixth? Fifth in the end. Oh, fifth. Sorry, Jesus. Okay, so there you go. Like, I mean, but as to why, I, you know, I don't know. I'm still, I'm stumped that I've kind of done a bit of kind of looking around to see if there's any information out yet as to any understanding of it, but there's nothing like you can't say it's oh it's because it's a street circuit well i mean there's other street circuits they've raced on in there that they, they dominate um you couldn't say it's just the weather because again they've raced in hot climates and muggy climates and they dominated can't say it's the surface because i mean again they've raced on street circuits they've dominated so what the combination is of this everything all the elements of the singapore grand prix that just that that concept for the the red bull hates that's a. I, I'd love to know. That's. Mm. I, it's a. It's a. It's a good question. I'd love to know, but I don't know. Is there a shout? Um, Max didn't come in under the the safety car and stayed out in the hards. Um, what what can you remember? What lap that was? Just off the top of your head. Is that when Logan Sargent crashed? Mm -hmm. mm, it was early on. I want to say probably lap twenty or something like that. Was it? So it seemed that uh, Max staying out on on the hards was the thing that kind of let them down. He eventually came back in again and made his way back to fifth from what, 15th, 16th or something? Um, could they have done something strategically different today that could have helped Max? Do you think Red Bull let him down today a little bit? I don't know. Where was he before he came into the pits? No, or sorry. Actually, no. Sorry, forget that. Where was he when everybody came in for the pits? I think he was 10th, uh, in around 10th or 11th, and then he brought his way up to second. So when he stayed Yeah, out. so in hindsight... Well, see, in, uh, even in hindsight, like, I mean, what could he have done? So he was he started on the hard compound tire. Mm. So had he have come in when everybody else came in, then he couldn't put a he, he has no tire to go to the end of the race. Mm. So if he came in for a medium tire, like they've got 40 odd laps to go that that tire, he would have finished back of the pack had he come in for medium or soft compound tire. So he couldn't come in for a hard tire because he, then he hasn't used two compounds and he has to come in for a third stop anyway. So he's going to, if he had come in at that time when everyone else came in, then it was going to be a three stop or sorry, two stop race for him rather than a one stop race. Mm -hmm. So the only option they had was to run him long and hope for a safety car. Um, and they kind of got screwed in the set with that virtual safety car coming out just after what, two laps, three laps after they had done their pit stop. Yeah. Um, so, I don't really know. I don't think there was anything else they could have really done. Um, I mean, that's uh, that medium that medium compound tire worked for them. Mm. Uh, I I don't think though if you, they if they put it on any long or any earlier, I don't know whether it would have stretched the performance would have stretched long enough for them to be competitive towards the end. So I don't know. Yeah, I think that that they what what they did was what what they had, and it was just down to the performance of the car on that circuit. 
Mm. And they were fighting a losing battle the whole time. And to, like I said, to finish where they did, I mean, finishing fifth and um, what did we have for um, Perez? Eighth. Like that is an mm. absolute baller of a finish for them, considering how poor that car was there. Like yeah. that's unbelievable. Yeah. Um, Isidro, do you think uh, today, I, I, I heard a few examples of Max not listening to what was being said to him from the pit wall. He was told... You're you're pushing too hard. You're gonna you're gonna cook your tires. You're within I think one and a half seconds of I I want to say it was Ocon at that stage, um and you shouldn't be, yet he still, uh he still pushed. Do you think that his attitude has has changed recently and that kind of let him down today? Yeah, I think uh, he should have listened a bit well better today, and because this weekend was not a normal weekend, he should realize that after the disappointing practice run on uh, on Friday and mm -hmm. the qualifying on Saturday. He should realize that it's not a normal weekend, so I should start leading pit wall because no matter how, how good Max is and how he understands the car and he knows how to keep the tires, this weekend was not a normal weekend. So, yeah, maybe it finished fifth. Maybe if the he was listening to pit wall more, maybe he could get uh, in the higher position. P5, it's not bad considering where he started and how the whole weekend pan out for him. But yeah, I think today uh, he should have just realized, no, this is not what I usually do on weekends, which is staying first and just stay away from everyone. Today I'm here in the middle of the pack. Mm -hmm. Maybe I should listen to what the pit wall has to say. Yeah, he hasn't been in uh, that, that situation in quite some time. So it was the first time this season, I think it was said, that he had been overtaken, which is interesting. Um, but uh, Dave, another question for you. Do you think Max purposely lost today just so that he could try and break his own record, seeing as he's broken every other record? What? So now he has to start again and try and break them? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as opposed to extending the current record that he already has. I think that's what he's trying to do. Just to I'd say it. that's exactly it. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly <laughs> what he went for. Uh, Dave, tell me about uh, Checo today. Not a lot really to talk about there. He just had a very poor day and very poor weekend. Yeah, I mean, there's I, there's not much to say about Perez this weekend. Hmm. Um, He's just not, like I say it every week about him, I just don't think he's as aggressive as Max when it comes to kind of fighting his way back through the pack. Um, although he kind of stayed comparable with Max in terms of the positions they came out in after their pit stop. So um, finishing eighth was probably not too bad in, in hindsight. But mm. I'll be honest, if I was Red Bull, I'd be looking to change him next year. Uh, like he's a great driver, but I think he's a great driver for... Alpine or um, you know yeah. one of these sort of mid-table teams or or sorry middle of the pack teams um, I think for Red Bull I think they need a, a new driver in there for next season. Something a bit more consistent um, and mm. someone who will challenge Max a little bit more as well I suppose. Yeah exactly. Yeah. Um, as I was saying earlier on a shitty day at the office for Alonso um, Dave or Isidro sorry I'll, I'll come to you Isidro um, he struggled um, pretty much all weekend. And the most striking thing uh, that he, he talked about this uh, on today over the radio was that the car seemed to be undrivable, is what he said. And it's the first time he's ever said that about the uh, the Aston Martin. It's interesting times for him there. Uh, yeah, and it got even worse after the, the pit stop. Uh, the performance really went down after the pit stop. I don't know what happened there, but it really went down. And which is sad because Aston Martin they had a really strong start, but after the supposed upgrades, everything went downhill since then, and they haven't recovered, which is a shame because uh, there was potential for Aston Martin to be fighting uh, for the top on the construction championship. Alonso to fight, I'm not saying who get first place at the time, Max was already very far up, but at least Alonso was would be in a better position to get the second place that he is now. So mm. Aston Martin should uh, start thinking faster and see what went wrong with the upgrades if they still want to to save the season. And this weekend was a bit uh, unlucky as they lost one of their drivers. Apparently they have a second driver there. Uh, stroll with, a, with that accident uh, didn't help the team either. So uh, 
overall uh, weekend to forget for Aston Martin. Was there a particular reason, Dave, why a second driver wasn't brought in there? Was it because the qualifying was done and there was no experience enough to come in and, and race uh, that circuit? Or what was the reason for that? Why didn't they put in a second car? I would imagine there's probably two. I'd say, one, that car was so severely damaged. Well, yes. Um, yeah, the rebuild. Now, in fairness, I'd say if Stroll could have driven, they pro- they would have probably rebuilt that car for it. But I think maybe as well that it's, uh, it's, a, it's a difficult circuit. And I think maybe dropping a driver in cold that has done no free practice, has done no qualifying, um, although having said that, there might be uh, I don't know whether there's some rule maybe if the if, if the qualifying driver so say if uh, say Max Verstappen or something like that qualifies first, uh, then I would imagine then you'd have to start at the back of the pack, wouldn't you? If you were mm-hmm. the replacement driver, you wouldn't you wouldn't hold the position. So I don't know. Maybe they just they just thought the risk versus the reward wasn't there. I thought that, I'd say they just thought putting a driver in cold, starting from the back of the grid anyway. There's uh, there's nothing to gain from that. And I wonder, is there any penalties involved with with not pl- putting a driver on the grid? Um, like you can't just decide, say Alpine come to the weekend, they're like, uh, we're not arsed going out this weekend. We'll just leave that until next week. I'd say in that circumstance there would be a penalty, but in, under these circumstances where they can clearly show that the car is hanging to bits, um, and their driver was also hanging equally to bits. So <laughs> I'd be interested to see, how, like, like, was it this? Was, sorry, sorry. Go on, Isidro. Sorry. I understand that the, the rule says for a for a driver to be replaced, he needs to do a qualifying and at least one practice. Okay, oh, right. so okay. That has place. There you so go. Yeah. Beach didn't do any. yeah, there's too much of a risk, I'd say, putting a driver mm. in cold. That's why they have to have at least some practice. But was it this season that uh, here's how bad my memory is. Was it the start of this season that Stroll damaged his hands, or was it yeah. last season? No, it was, it was this season. season. So he lost, yeah. he missed out this season, and now and that, now. I don't know, I think this guy's like made out of paper bags or something like that. <laughs> I don't buy it. <laughs> yeah. Either that or he's just, he's got something else on and he's, he's just crashing it into walls so he can get home early. Yeah, watch the rugby. Yeah. I think what, I think the problem is that he, he, he didn't really miss, he was, he had the accident around December and the recovering was not, was very fast. So, he didn't miss the, the first races, and I think that's the problem that he didn't fully have to recover from the injuries. Oh, that's right, he didn't miss that. That's a, we were all kind of that's right, that we were surprised that he didn't actually miss. He ended up starting this the races, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right, I remember now. Interesting, Jesus, that shows my memory. But actually, before we move on from Aston Martin, I know you were just about to roll into the next segment, I was. um, but before we move on from uh, Aston Martin, I, I was convinced this was a circuit that would have suited them i thought they were going to bounce back for this circuit Mm. um clearly not um but i wonder though is that because they borrowed a lot of their design concepts from uh red bull i wonder is there something that's in that design so there is a reason for why this the, the, the car underperforms on this circuit so maybe we might see them do a little bit better in japan yeah, good point. I don't know. Just throwing it out there. It could be absolute nonsense. It's reminiscent of um, someone lining out for a marathon who never does marathons and taking a nice sprint at the start um, and then after a mile completely gassing out and be like, oh, <laughs> Jesus, yeah. falling down and puking. Um, That's strange. He looks so good for the first two <laughs> kilometers. <laughs> <laughs> He's so far ahead. Yeah. Um, anyway, yeah, tactics not quite there for, for Aston Martin. And uh, Dave... Let's uh, let's finish up. I think with uh, Liam Lawson. You can't you can't finish without mentioning this dude. No, he's um, he's hopped in there, and I'm, like I'm sure Danny Rick, while he appreciates the dig out, is itching to get back into that alpha seat because Lawson is driving the crap out of that car. But you know, I was uh, I was thinking of this as well. Uh, not just this weekend, but last weekend as well. You know, the last race as well. I don't think I I think I don't think the pressure's on Daniel Ricciardo to come back and kind of you know I don't think anyone's kind of thinking. Oh, Daniel Ricciardo now he's at, he's Lawson's after coming in here and he's you know he's bossing it and now you know maybe Daniel Ricciardo's under pressure. I think it's Sonoda that's under pressure because mm-hmm. Ricciardo came in and performed better than Sonoda. Lawson's come in performing better than Sonoda. So if anyone's under pressure, it's that fella. <laughs> mm. But no matter what uh, Sonoda seems to do in that car, he he doesn't seem to be under under any pressure. Is it is it the fact that that Japanese market is so lucrative for AlphaTauri that they're leaving him in that seat? 
don't think so. I don't think. Do you know Sonoda reminds me of? Do you remember? Uh, God, I don't know whether I'm showing my age or not, but do you remember <laughs> Prince Nazim? Oh yeah, the boxer, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. Unbelievable. Like now, okay, Sonoda. Let's let's slow those r- words for <laughs> referring to that as, uh, for uh, him. But he loved boxing. That's probably the best way of going, right? He loved boxing, and Sonoda seems to love Formula One, but hates being in shape for Formula One. Like hates yeah. fitness, hates doing all that. And Prince Nazim was the same, hated it. And as soon as he retired, the man like ballooned. It was like someone, you know, it's like someone stuck a football pump up his arse and just kept going. Like (laughs) he absolutely, and I can imagine Sonoda will be the same. Like he's just going to be like, you know, just this kind of short little Japanese man, but built like, you know, know, good and fit. And then he's going to just kind of go, ah, Jesus, you know, they're going to let me go at the end of the season. And he is just going to be rolled out of the paddock. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be able to get him out of the car afterwards. I wouldn't yeah. <laughs> say. Um, yeah, he's an interesting character, Sonoda. I, I, after last season, I, I can't understand why he was in. I, I would have shouted for him to be out for this gone. season. Yeah, gone. But there's a couple he, of drivers on that grid that should be gone. And uh, Sonoda is one of them. Yeah, for sure. Mm. Do we think that Joe, sorry, before we move on, Dave, do you think that Joe is putting in enough of a performance this year to, to warrant a seat next year? Do you know Strangely enough, I, I think, yeah, I think you do. I think that car, because I mean, you have to then think if he's not putting in the effort to, to deserve his seat for next year, then Bottas isn't putting in the effort to deserve Because I mean, they're both kind of trading positions mm-hmm. quite frequently. So I think they're both sort of getting as much of the, as possible out of that car. I'd love to see Joe in a, a better car, maybe even like at a you know, even at, in in that uh, Logan Sargent seat, I know that wouldn't happen, but just something that you know it's a car that can actually do something like Alex Albon proves. It's a car that you could fight for the top ten. Whereas that Alpha, I don't know. It's a it's a bit of a it's a bit of a shit. Maybe the, everyone's checked out waiting for the Audi deal or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. Like, but it's it's yeah, it's not good. Uh, and anyway, Dave, we do uh, our driver of the day. Do you want to take that up? Uh, yeah, okay, so uh, yeah, we're each going to give our driver of the day and loser of the day. So, I mean, I'd be shocked if anybody has anything different to me, but I'm going with Carlos Sainz for an absolute stellar drive and genius tactical drive. Uh, yeah, I was back and forth on this throughout the race. Um, Sainz is the obvious choice. Um, Norris had a blinder, and I like I was back and forth again on, on Lawson for performing how he did down there um, and for doing what he did to uh, to Max in uh, qualifying. But uh, yeah, science. Yeah, yeah, it has to be science. Isidro, who, do you, who have you gone with? I had the same train of thought as Scotty, but I kept with Lawson. I think for a oh. rookie on the third time, he did very, very well. <laughs> Dave's face. <laughs> uh, me, like... <laughs> Zero. <laughs> like we've just seen a drive there with tactics that we don't frequently see in Formula One. That he had the the like don't get me wrong, I'm not gonna take from Lawson. He did a great drive and he got he got some points and stuff like that. Fantastic. But we rarely see a drive like that from a, fr- fr- from someone that's tactically able to manage a race a- a- and and use another team's driver, not even his own teammate, like to to manage the race. He used another team to to do that. That's it. Ah, that was absolutely baller. Like I mean, he he was only short of coming off with the you know the shades and the spliff and the Snoop Dogg music going. Like I mean, <laughs> it was unbelievable. I'm not saying that signs doesn't deserve, but uh, if we see Lawson in Alpha Tauri and signs are in the Ferrari, it's more difficult to get points in Alpha Tauri than it is on the Ferrari. No, no, I'm not letting this go. You, you're going to say that. How can you put the two of them together? Like, it was great. Don't get me wrong. I'm not going to, I'm not taking it away. But he held off the, 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 the two Mercedes by using the McLaren, like, as a buffer and kept intentionally slowing down to get the, the McLaren into the DRS to stop the Mercedes, who are much quicker than both of them, over to, like, that in itself was just on on old hard tires. It was it was unbelievable. It was genius. Like we just don't see that in Formula One. 
like we've seen a rookie get points before. I mean, look at Nick DeFries, like, you know, when he get, he did a, a the points finish in Monza for Williams and then ended up getting a drive that went extremely well. So like I wouldn't compare DeFries with Lawson. I think Lawson is is better than DeFries. Completely better than DeFries, but not better than what signs managed today, surely. I, I'm not saying Lawson is better. I'm just saying that for me. The drive, the drive was better than what Sainz did. Between driving in Alfa Tauri and driving the Ferrari, I know Sainz is very good, but I'll keep Lawson. For Lawson to hold that position, so for Lawson to hold that position, he had, uh, let me see here, he had Magnussen, Albon, Joe, and Hulkenberg behind him. For Sainz to hold that position on hard tires, he had to use another team as a buffer. He had to hold two Mercedes that were on soft compound tires who were gaining by like two seconds a lap. And you're going, like, I I get why you think Lawson deserves driver of the day, but I'm kind of, I have to throw in why. <laughs> Wait until I tell you what's, uh, what's the rank of the drivers of the day. Ooh. It's Carl Sainz, 21.2%. Liam Lawson, 14.4%. Lando Norris, 13.6%. That's top three drivers of the day. Yeah, so clearly it was <laughs> Carlos Sainz. Everybody agrees. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it when mommy and daddy fight. Um, <laughs> Dave, right. go on. Who's the loser of the day? Okay, losers of the day. Sorry. Okay, so my loser of the day, uh, you know, I, don't have to, I, I don't have anything prepared or written down for this. Uh, when I was watching the race, I was initially going to go with a, a team and just say kind of Red Bull were losers of the day, more so losers of the weekend. But, I mean, clearly the last lap uh, <laughs> threw that out the window and George <laughs> Russell was clearly the loser of the day uh, who had third place and potentially second or first uh within his sights and uh bend it in a wall so yeah george russell is my loser of the day yeah again i i find it sometimes a hard a hard to, to quantify loser of the day whether i feel that it the, the, this driver is a loser um Go with I, your heart on this one <laughs> uh, initially and it, it was very early in the race uh, i don't think he even made it round one lap uh i went with yuki sonoda because he's had a, a string of really bad results um, and then I noticed that the Haas drivers both qualified quite high. They both, uh, where they were nine and I think sixth qualifying, Something like that, yeah, yeah sixth and know. ninth, and then ended up. Uh, obviously, K Mag got got the last point, but Hulkenberg ended up in thirteen. So I wanted to say that Haas overall were the losers of the day because you know everyone hates Haas, um, but yeah, you can't you can't take it away from George heartbreaking absolutely heartbreaking yeah. for him and his washboard abs so hang on a second so just to clarify are you going with sonoda or george i'm going with george russell george. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah i thought i'd just give you a bit of a spiel oh isidro who have you gone with <laughs> for us all, of course. Hey! All right. okay we're all on the same page <laughs> mommy and daddy won't fight great <laughs> um all right dave all right uh all right dave what what are we doing we are going to the <laughs> predictions game predictions game of course we are okay right <laughs> more fighting <laughs> yeah all right okay and uh, da, 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 da. right singapore oh jesus yes yeah i've seen it already <laughs> right uh okay so my predictions uh, of the top three were uh max verstappen p1 did not happen lewis hamilton p2 did not happen and fernando alonso p3 also did not happen Scotty, uh, yeah, done. I'll be nice and quick. Uh, none of mine came off either. Verstappen, Perez, Leclerc, nothing. Goose eggs all round. Yep. And a zero. Same for me. Verstappen, Alonso, and Perez. It, it was wah. brutal. All right. Uh, I went with my flop was Russell outside top 10. God damn it. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not even going to try and ask for it. Yeah, it yeah, I didn't yeah. call it DNF, so don't worry. I, I saw you ready to jump in, Scotty. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but they did finish. It was not DNF. What? Russell finished. He was qualified. Oh, he was classified. 16th. Yeah. No. Yeah. You just oh, talked yourself out of some point. No, no, no. DNF. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. I just thought. Nah, yeah. Was. DNF. No, no. no. <sighs> Jesus. Uh, yeah. Close. He got 16th, but it was a DNF. Yeah. yeah. No, that's, um, that's a goose egg for me. 
All right. Uh, I went with Norris outside the top 10. That was Goose st eggs. stupid. Yep. And look back, Vienna. Oh, my days. Surprise. <laughs> Lance Stroll, top 10. Wow. <laughs> Didn't even make it to the start line. <laughs> Go on. What are you um, doing? Oh, Jesus. I went with Albon P5 and uh, Verstappen kept him out of that. Uh, yeah. And. Uh... Oh, look at this. Yeah. I got Gasly yeah. inside top 10. He did. Fuck. Yeah. And yeah. you got the P6. Check. <laughs> like, he's after you... taking the win this week on one fucking position. <laughs> That's how shit oh. we are. <laughs> go, we are absolute muck, aren't we? Yeah, okay, let me go up. So that means... Oh, we have a new... No. As we got a new oh, leader of the tables. <laughs> Azidro is on uh, nine points at the top of the table. I'm in second on eight. And Scotty, you are still last on six. Yes. Oh, I'm going to have to fucking... And, and do you know the worst thing is? I'm, I was just about to say I've got to put a, I put a throw an effort in for uh, Japan. Well, I have nothing prepared for Japan. I'm about to do this like right off the seat of my pants. Like oh, I have absolutely. So, Japan. Uh, I'm gonna guess that the new um, rule changes on that flexible wing wasn't what caused um, Red Bull to be shit this weekend. So I'm going to assume that they'll be back on top in Japan. So I'm going to say Verstappen P1. Oh Jesus. Verstappen, uh, Verstappen, P1, uh, P2. Oh, fuck me. I should have prepared this. Uh, I'm gonna go, fuck it. I'm gonna go signs P2. I'm gonna ride that fucking bandwagon until it's got nothing left. Um, and then P3, uh, fuck it. We'll go Hamilton. Ah, oh, for fuck's sake. All right. And I made that up as I go, so there was no, there was no fucking looking at anyone. So what did you get, Scotty? Um, You've gone the same, have you? Exact same. Max oh. signs Hamilton. Uh, yeah, signs crest of a wave. Max will be back to normal. Hamilton, uh, just cause he's Hamilton. So you're going signs, Max Hamilton. No, no, no. Or? Max signs Hamilton. Oh, Max signs Hamilton. Okay. Yeah, exact same. Okay. And Azidro, who are you going with? Uh, Max first, signs second, and Perez third. Oh, at least we've got some different, uh, some different uh, ballers in there. Nice. Flop. Oh, Jesus. This is where it maybe gets a little bit more difficult off the seat of my pants. Um, my flop for Japan. Uh, I'm going to go with. I should have prepared this when I'm second and I need to <laughs> regain the lead. I just shouldn't have done this. I'm saying you're handing the advantage to Cedro here. Um, my flop will be... Do I play it safe or do I go big air? Big air. Big air. Okay, I'm going with a Perez DNF. You're welcome, Cedro. I pushed him into <laughs> that decision. I think it's going to be a crash. Um, Hang on a second. I'm going to put that down. Do I get two points if it's a crash? Uh... And yeah, not sure. uh, not mechanical. Yeah, sure, go on. All right, and I'm I'm in third. I don't really care. Crash for two. Um, I'm right. gonna go. I'm gonna go quite safe here. I'm gonna say uh, Gasly DNF. Gasly DNF. Okay, and uh, Isidro. Piastri outside top ten. Who? Piastri. Oscar Piastri. Oh. Yeah. He's outside he's, top ten. I know. Yeah, I know. He I know. finished inside. That's just weak. <laughs> like, me, me, like me and Scotty went for it a little bit. Like I proper went for it. Is he? Scotty kind of gave it a half a shape, and you've just phoned it in. Hmm. Uh, all right, Piastri. That, that's outside. why he's the league leader. I know, but I mean, it doesn't make it fun. I <laughs> top 10. All right, surprise. Um. Surprise is ah. Do you know what? Fuck yes, then. Don't Alonso. Do ah! <laughs> oh wait. Yeah, he Jeff finished is... outside the top ten. So surely I can pick him. <laughs> That's that was my pick. <laughs> you jerk. <laughs> uh... What were you going to say? What was your your uh, argument there, Zidro? I was going to say, Alonso has been consistent on finishing inside the top 10. Yeah, but you know, he's... is the 
He was outside. Yeah, the rules. Yeah, the rules, the rules. I, um, I, I know but, that's that's going to come back and bite, bite us, but... Uh, <laughs> it's going to come back and bite you right about now. Okay, so uh, I am going to say uh, George Russell inside the top 10. Get a DNF. Yeah. He wasn't outside the top 10 last week. Oh, last does it have to be yeah. finishing? Oh, that's shite. Okay, uh, let me see. That's like oh. saying, if you want to go the opposite, just say George Russell finishes the race. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, Albon inside the top 10. Give me that. Albon, top 10. That'll be a tough one. Mm. All right. A zero, your surprise. Ocon inside top 10. Yeah, well, actually, that's... Well, they haven't finished the race since uh, since Netherlands. Even but again, hang on. But that's need... kind of... What, where, where did he finish Early... in Monza? Oh, sorry, where did he finish in his last race that he uh, finished? Netherlands, he finished 10th. Yeah. Well, then, that's... Well, where did he finish that's... in Monza? He didn't. He finish. Oh, he so didn't. That's what, so that's the same rules apply to you as did for uh, Scotty. Scotty couldn't pick George Russell because George Russell had a DNF. So in, mm. if his last finish was inside the top 10, you can't have him. Uh, oh, nice. Uh, well, if, what if I pick a position? Ooh. Oh yeah, yeah, I mean, no, yeah, I'd be tempted yeah. with that, chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll go with that. Okay, Ocon P seven. Ooh, that's a yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll yeah, that. safe enough. He's not getting that. No way. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Although he's, he's. I think he's called positions before that he got, didn't he? Albon yeah. got P seven last. Yeah. That was only two races yeah. ago. Yep. Um, so <laughs> yeah, yeah, that could bite us quite <laughs> handsomely. No, it's all right. Gasly and Ocon are going to take each other out. It's fine. Oh man! All right, let's have a look now. See if there's any update to the fantasy league. I'm going to say absolutely no because they're really fucking slow. Um. Oh, but my points are in. Hang on a second. But they haven't updated the. Ta have they updated the table? No, the table calculations are not in yet. But the points are in. Hang on a second. So 255, am I knocked off the top spot? 255. Oh, oh I kept the top surviving. <laughs> Fuck you <yourself>. all. <laughs> yeah, I have successfully retained the top spot. I am P1 after Singapore. All right, I'm going to have to put some effort into this thing. What? I'm going to have to put some effort into this thing. <laughs> yeah. right? <laughs> and on country. that note, I shall see you all in Japan, <laughs> where I shall continue my role. Um, yeah, we'll be all back next week, everybody. So tune in and uh, you can all celebrate with me uh, as I crush this F1 Fantasy uh, League. And uh, we'll hopefully uh, make some shapes as well on the prediction game because uh, we can't let Zero get away with this. Nope. So until next time. 